Hello and welcome back to another episode of Not Fighting. I'm Tyler Bishop and I'm Jenna Bishop. Thanks and, for letting me introduce myself. Yeah, we, this is take two. We uh, tried a first take and we just, uh, yeah, we were we were scrambling. I was mostly all over the place, so Jenna was like, we got to restart it. Yeah, you're doing too much. Yeah, and this is episode number 50, actually. Five zero. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but, I, okay, I don't know. I was like, on camera, is it backwards? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wait is it like much. a mirror <laughs> <laughs> no. it's she said oh five <laughs> that's my graduating year yep you old <laughs> yeah old <laughs> um but yeah we wanted to have some guests for episode 50 but um we we have dropped the ball yep that's on us and honestly i feel like i just need to do a better job of like getting these things planned ahead of time but um because you like have like real work during the week and real stuff work. and i'm just like training really hard which is really hard but uh and i taught a lot this week so we've been busy yeah we got we got excuses for you we just didn't do it what we were <laughs> what we said we would <laughs> but we do want to have some guests on sometime soon yeah so hopefully we'll get some some people lined yeah, up yeah we and- have some people in mind so i just need to uh, reach out to them and get them set up or invite them out over like under false pretenses and yeah. then give him like a nice meat and cheese tray and then you know are we inviting mike <laughs> uh, michael trasso hashtag the merge <laughs> if you haven't actually checked out our good friend mike's uh face or not facebook instagram uh channel before it's called the merge but he shows lots of really good wrestling stuff on there so just yeah. shout out to him he's got some great wrestling yeah skills and he breaks things down in a way that's like really easy to understand and he does a great job so yeah if you can understand that like jersey accent <laughs> <laughs> he was here last week and it's funny because we used to train with him for a long time and uh it was obvious from the moment he arrived in san diego that he was like destined to go back to the east coast yeah we sad about it do you, do you feel like you can tell the difference between an east coast person and a west coast person like Outside of just the accent, which is, like, obvious, right, a lot of times? Yes, yes. And I feel like, uh, actually, we were talking about this because we have some uh, new uh, dog park friends, and uh, they're from Boston. And so we were talking about how it's easier for people, or, and, oh, no, we're ta- I've been talking about it with a lot of people because we have a lot of friends from the East Coast now. But it's I think it's easier for people to transport from east coast to west coast than west coast to east coast yeah i agree with that 100 like, percent. for me i mean i'm from the midwest but i like the east coast is just not my vibe it's at all i've like wanted to be on the west coast forever and then every time we go back or if we like go to new york or anywhere on the east coast i'm just like meh like but i understand that people from the west coast it's like it's too life's too easy here yeah <laughs> yeah life's not life's not real enough you, you know can't, you can't go to the, the to the to the east coast and then like think that you're gonna be there like for real for real yeah like i feel like you you go from the west coast to the east coast and you're like oh do you have like gluten-free organic potatoes here and then the restaurant's like what are you uh, uh yeah don't, don't try no <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's like people on the West Coast, especially in California, like, I mean, I feel like California is the West Coast, right? Basically. Anyhow. Uh, most of the West <laughs> most Coast. Most of it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, I think, you know, especially Southern California, like people can't handle when the temperature is like, no. you know, when we have weather. So yeah. if there's, there's just, can you imagine the other harshnesses of? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> like you see how people freak out when it like foggy. <laughs> it's like fog it's is like misting the, today it's like the precursor to rain and they're like it's raining you're like it's fog and then everybody's like well we're gonna go ahead and shelter up for a couple weeks now <laughs> and can you imagine how they'd handle like snow on the east coast or just anything yeah just life um, <laughs> immediate quit <laughs> anyway we were talking about so we wanted to kind of like take it back to things that we um kind of started out the podcast doing and we were talking about things that you know just like people on the east coast are tolerating a lot just like living there <laughs> if you become a grappler you um i mean just in grappling like there's a lot of things that you start to tolerate that if you take a step back or if you talk to anyone who doesn't grapple they kind of are like huh like what that's not yeah. that's odd that's gross or that's that's weird 
Um, and so we were talking, we wanted to like kind of go over the things that are like the, some of the worst things that you just tolerate and become kind of norms. Yeah. Yeah. And a I lot guess. of cases, the grossest things. Yeah. Too. Like the grossest, weirdest things and that it's, you. It's those things where it's like in uh, grappling or jujitsu, um, they become sort of like commonplace where it's, you could have a conversation with somebody in the locker room about them. But if you were to tell like somebody that, you know has never done martial arts before or something like that, like a coworker or something about like, oh yeah, you know, like uh, my finger dislocated last night, check it out. And then it's all crooked. Yeah. You're like, oh my God, like, did you go to the emergency room? And you're like, nope. <laughs> Just pulled it back, put it in place. And then now it's deformed forever. Trained three more <laughs> rounds because it still works good until it swells up. Yep. <laughs> I think those are that, the, 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 Thought process, the that was weird. <laughs> I was gonna really say it's the perfect example. The, the, the. Yeah. But the thought process behind it was, um, I have been draining my ear for like the past week yep. lately because I have some cauliflower like swelling going on, and it just. I, and there's like it's like one of those things that's kind of going around the gym right now. There's a couple of people that have a flared up and it's not contagious i'm just saying it just it's going ha- around it happens cauliflower to be. ears going around <laughs> Ca- got a bad case <laughs> we all trained with the same person that jacked up our ears i yeah. guess i don't know somebody's out there ear balling people <laughs> <laughs> yes so i've been like draining my ear which is you know uh something that most people are like are you seriously sticking a needle into your ear and pulling yeah. fluid out of it that's gross and then um and i've been dra- draining another one of my teammates ears for him <laughs> i have like every day almost which is funny <laughs> because it's like you know like the woman is the one that's like draining her own ear and then oh uh, the guy like can't drain his own ear you gotta drain it for him yeah have you i mean you've drained your knee so i can't say yeah. that you wouldn't drain your own ear yeah if I'm, it happened yeah i've definitely <laughs> drained my own ear i just haven't had to luckily yeah which you learned something kind of interesting about uh cauliflower ear that i'd I'm guessing like probably most of our viewers or listeners don't know. Well, it's it's funny. So I like I had been people have been like commenting or telling me like you should just if you like if you drain your ear, it's just going to swell back up like you have to keep it compressed. And so um, somebody was telling me like you should just go to like, you know, the doctor and get it like basically cut open and then stitched back up and it'll it won't like swell up again and you can like kind of like heal faster, I guess. Um, so I had made, I went to an, an urgent care and they like, were like, yeah, we can't treat that. We don't know anything about Stop it. Stop being weird. Come to us with like normal things. And so please. I went to another, I called another urgent care. I made an appointment. I called ahead. I was like on the phone with this person for like, 30 minutes they were trying to talk to the doctor that was there making sure that before I go like they would be able to treat this and so I get there and this is this old guy who basically has no clue like has never encountered this in his life and he um was I was telling him I was like yeah weren't even out yet when this guy was (laughs) he's like ears are new (laughs) yeah so I'm like I told him like basically what I wanted done and like what was going on. I'm like, yeah, if it, if I don't take care of it, it's going to like the, the fluid in there, like it starts to just harden and then your ear will be like permanently deformed. I don't want it to look like this. And he's like, oh no, that's not going to happen. I'm like, "Mm, yes, it will. And I told him to (laughs) it like that. I was like, yes, it will. And I'm like, clearly I'm wasting my time right now. He's like, you need to be a specialist. That's going to like, basically like I need plastic surgery just like to get my ear drained. So, uh, I have some friends that like sent me uh, sent me to this other doctor who works in an ER in urgent care, I think, and he um, also I think assumed trains or was wrestled or something like that because he has cauliflower himself, and he even like sent me a special article on like to send because he's he's out of town right now, but he was like, go to like a specialist and then give them this article and then tell them this is yeah, how it was you a stitch it. Paper and I saw yeah. he had actually written it. And it's like yeah. a novel technique for like whatever, whatever hematoma. Yeah. He's done this like whatever. Yeah. So it's just like, it's, you know, uh, but he was telling me, he's like, people think it's like, um, it's like a repetitive thing. Like that's why you get cauliflower is just like, like repetitive in- trauma to the ear. But he's like, it's actually just an acute injury. And then the blood, like there, you get blood starts pulling in between the cartilage in your ear. And that's why it starts swelling. 
Yeah. And, and so that was a revelation to me yeah. because I think most people probably think that uh, cauliflower ear and like the really bad ears, it's uh, cumulative, mm-hmm. meaning like, you know, you get a bad one and then it just gets worse over time or something. But realistically, if somebody has really bad ears, it's more likely they just injured their ear a whole bunch mm-hmm. um, as opposed to like, oh, it just builds up over time or something. Yeah. So, yeah, cauliflower is one of the things that I think um, in the sport, I mean, I think people sometimes look at that as like a trophy. Yeah, I which know. I th- I don't understand that. I think I, like it's a weird like broy thing that people do. I don't want ears like now. I'm like, oh man, I'm thankful that I have hair that can cover it. But like this ear that's messed up is like sticking out further. So if I put my head in, my hair in a ponytail, I'm like, I have one ear that lays flat and one that's like poking out now. But not even cute. For, even for dudes that I think <laughs> it's tough or whatever. It's like mine aren't very bad, but I can tell that there's like yeah, they're not a hundred percent perfect or whatever. Your barber was like asking to like, can I like. Feel, feel your them. ear because like, they're like... all stiff and i'm like yeah it feels like they have little pieces of rock in them <laughs> um but yeah i think that it's one of those things where it's like uh while well, you might think it's like cool in the circle of like grappling people or whatever it's it's not fun to have it makes your ears sore so it's yeah it hurts and then no one else thinks it's cool they no. think it's like gross they're like ew why is your ear like that <laughs> yeah and so I, I yeah i've never got that so if you're messing your ears up like stop that cut yeah. it out People do it on purpose for sure they do. Um, but it's not the only gross like deformity that I feel like you get that's like very readily viewable to people. Uh, me personally, uh, whenever people see my hands, they're like, goo, what's wrong with your hands? Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think anybody, especially if you train in the gi, your hands are going to be yeah. like riddled with arthritis and then they start getting like real bumpy at every joint, like deformed at all the joints. And it's real nasty. Tyler's holding up his hand if you haven't seen him before. I mean, there's like so many photos out there that you can find of like grapplers' hands and they're yeah. nasty. Although, um, grappling hands, like they're gross and they get like, they get like the bumps, the arthritis, like the, the like weird, like my pinkies like turn in like in yeah. a weird way. And that's from like holding sleeve grips. Um, but uh, I think football players i've seen a lot of football players a lot of really crooked hands with very crooked fingers like in (laughs) ways that like why is like your middle finger like crosses over like all the other fingers like (laughs) yeah a good friend of ours an older guy named steve yeah uh, he played uh played for the bears i think he played safety but he played for the cardinals like yeah yeah the but football cardinals either way he played anyway. professional football and um mm-hmm. he's an older guy but he's a black belt and um he's got just some crooked fingers i mean like they're not even bendable no they go like sideways literally half of the finger bends sideways yeah and so like whenever he would show like a choke from mount he would basically just be like what you got to do is and then karate chop you in the <laughs> neck and then he's like and then put the second hand over here and you're like he's not grabbing anything it's just like he can't <laughs> But and that's like, can you imagine if you start out with, you know, playing a, a professional sport like that and get jacked up fingers and then you start doing grappling and just like, they're just going to get worse. Yeah, it's like they're not making it better. <laughs> but nobody who, no, I, I doubt there's a single person out there that's grappled for any length, length of time that could be like a professional hand model. No, 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 no. And that's the thing too is like, it's not just your hands, it's your feet. And those might not be as obvious to people because... People yeah. don't always just have their feet out or it's not something that people are necessarily paying attention to. But like my toes, when I get up on my toes, they just go opposite directions. Like none of my toes. Your are, big toes don't bend anymore. No, they don't. They just go up and down. Yeah. Which, weird, and I didn't tell you this, but my trainer, um, he was telling me that he had injured a big toe or his toe like that and it wouldn't bend. It was just straight. But over time, he was able to like rehab it and it's like just started bending again so there's hope for your toes yeah i think uh what happens most of the time is they just get calcified like it's mm-hmm. not like the bones fuse together yeah. necessarily on their own um so i'm sure it's possible uh yeah. that when i talked to the hand guy that basically was like your hands are screwed just like stop doing it and then i'll fix them and i was like well nice meeting you <laughs> not- i know how many doctors have have you been to or we've heard friends go to that they were just like basically tell you like you need to stop doing jujitsu or else this isn't going to get better and it's like well that's not the option it came to you to figure out how to be make me 
like healthy enough to do jujitsu again. Yeah, they didn't like, MRI well. my hands because the doctor was like certain that my finger couldn't be that deformed uh, at this age, like without rheumatoid arthritis. Or, <laughs> um, and he also just thought that like I must have heard it recently. I'm like, no, it's just been this way for years. Actually, it's doing really great right now. Mm-hmm. And we took it and he showed me the picture and it just looks like a piece of coral. It's all spongy mm. and stuff like that. And he's like, yeah, this, I've never seen this uh, in a, 30 year old man before well it's because you have never seen a grappler's hand yeah because you've never seen a savage's hand before see you later doc <laughs> <laughs> but yours are really bad because your fingers have been dislocated from grip breaking like yeah. so much which mine haven't i think my my thumbs have been jacked up my pinkies have been jacked up more than anything and i think everybody all of us have dealt with like a, a like dislocated or like a sprained thumb just yeah that happens and then it's just impossible to go away you can tape it up but every time you go to make a grip you just hit it on something and it's just like irritated yeah. again back to square one i was telling somebody the other day <laughs> they were like complaining about their thumb i was like oh yeah i hurt my thumb that way a long time ago when i was a white belt and i just remember like telling it to them as if like at some point you're gonna have to get that so you might as well it's like the chicken pox like you gotta get it at some <laughs> point like you might as well have a party everybody comes over we'll just jack everybody jack everybody's thumb up a little bit you know i think i think another thing that you're gonna like get at some point and it's um kind of commonplace in grappling is uh ringworm and uh, that's like it's like more more so like chicken pox than yes. <laughs> than jacked up yeah. thumbs thumbs but ringworm, you can get it again <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it comes back i think it's so funny because i think most people if you don't train you're you hear ringworm and you're like ew gross like that's dirty. like dirty, whatever. Which it is. <laughs> and, and, it, and it is. It's gross. And I'm not like we're a not, fan of, and we're not condoning just like training with ringworm. But like at most, most of the time, like you're going to, you're going to encounter it at one time. And I think I've come to the, the notion that it's gross um, and it itches. It's not comfortable, but it's also like not life threatening. It's like not that big of a deal. It's just like, you know, fungus on your skin and you just like treat it and it'll go away. Well, that's the thing <laughs> but don't that- spread it to your teammates <laughs> yeah and i think that's the thing is like as long as you care that you have it like mm-hmm. you're gonna probably be in good shape like uh when i was a blue belt i feel like i had it for like a solid two two years whatever strain we had like it was just hard to get rid of but you also didn't know what you were dealing with i remember back then being like oh do i have like a mosquito bite like what is this and then by the time you realize like it's ringworm it started to like yeah but now the circle like, has formed. <laughs> yeah. Now, anytime I get any red bump on anything, I'm like, mm, just going to treat it. Just going to put safe. that antifungal cream on there. Try and get this gone. <laughs> yeah. And you're just like. Because it's either ringworm or staph. <laughs> and it's like I use. One of those is way more dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I feel like all skin infections can get lumped into this. And ringworm is the most benign. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, like impentigo, staph, like. You know, those are really serious things. You'll go your entire life and maybe never, like, deal with a friend or family member that, that gets that. But if you're a grappler, it's impossible to not know some, yeah, a training somebody ha- has Somebody it. has it at, at all times. And I think what's funny to me is that, like, I have, and I, I mean, maybe maybe we're just weird in this sense, but, uh, or I'll, I don't know, like, most of the time if I, if I, see ringworm on somebody i'll be like yo you need to like cover that up at least bare minimum yeah. you know i'm not gonna tell somebody to like you you need to not train because yeah. you have ringworm um because i know that i wouldn't want to hear that <laughs> <laughs> but if i was if the shoe was on the other foot but i would like you cover it you keep it like treated as much as possible shower as much as possible but i have definitely been training with somebody and be like that looks like maybe that's ringworm on their neck and they're like i think it's a heat rash you're like in a in a circle but no i don't i don't even say anything to them what i'm saying is that i've seen it on a training oh, partner yeah, gotcha. yeah and i'm just like eh, well still need to train so i'll just take a shower right away yeah and <laughs> you're a great resource for that because every now and then i'll be like man i get this like bump i put ringworm stuff on and you're like oh yeah jj had ringworm and i'm like ooh, got it or like <laughs> you're just calling him out <laughs> I mean, jj's got ringworm i mean like <laughs> just, what, no matter when this podcast comes out it's like a safe bet i feel like sorry jj <laughs> anyhow (laughs) but yeah i mean it's one that's one of the ones you can kind of cover up but you know what i think is fun and i tell this to people all the time um whenever i have like a big uh like event where i have to be in front of people or talk or something like that 
uh i just know that's gonna be when like not even in intense training just happenstance somebody's gonna kick me in the face i'm gonna get a black eye but you yep. jiu the sport where you get all kinds of weird bruises yes. and marks and yes. all kinds of stuff yeah black eyes are pretty common common stance i think i've been hit in the face more doing jujitsu than i have done striking and I'm not a great striker. Like, it's not like, oh, yeah, she's got some sick defense. No, no, no. I don't. No, I feel the flyweights out there. She, she'll eat a lot of punches. So just take those no. fights. But in jiu-jitsu, man, you get hit in the face all the time where you're your, your lips banged up, your your bruise all over, like your like black, uh, black eyes, which honestly, I've never really had a bad black eye. Um, just little bruises here and there. And then, you know, especially a lot of the females that I train with, like, it's commonplace that, like, your legs just look, you know, pretty bruised all we the time. We have one friend that's she just, like, bruises really easily, and it always looks like she was just, like, beaten mercilessly. Yeah, and then you have to, like, you have to, like, um, know that, you know, I'm... If we go out and we're getting weird looks and I'm with my boyfriend, my <laughs> husband, or someone, you know, another male, like people are going to give you guys weird looks for sure because they're going to be like, um, you know, or maybe like somebody at your, a coworker at work will be like, are you okay? Is you everything have, all right have, at you have home? fingerprint, like, like grab <laughs> bruises on your arm. That's a, Yeah. And you're always going to have like grab marks on the inside of your biceps, oh, yeah. little pinch marks everywhere. And just, you know, I'm used to like, it's, it would be weird to like inspect my body and not find a bruise on it at yeah. this point. <laughs> yeah. And I think women too, like you obviously. Or some kind of scratch from like a fingernail. Especially here in Southern California, you're more often going to probably show a little bit more skin, like maybe something without like a full length sleeve or something like that too. So you're going to see all those bruises, like like you said, up on the inner bicep and uh, stuff like that. But yeah, I think I think it's funny because you can get really like, um, I, I mean, I've seen more people get their teeth knocked out in jiu-jitsu uh, than I have in MMA or any other martial art. Yeah. You broke your tooth on a table, though. Yeah, chasing our dog around, <laughs> little rascal. I've Sorry, somehow just, avoided it, but... That just is funny to me. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> he was so mad. He was trying to run away from me. We had glass table. You guys get it. Anyway, sorry, that was really funny to me. Cut to chip my tooth, you know. <laughs> At least you didn't knock it out completely. And it's funny, I mean, we've talked about this too, but like, we... I have seen so many people get hit in the mouth, like teeth busted, and yet still, I don't wear a mouthpiece when I do jujitsu. I mean, after somebody gets their teeth, I might out, do it for like one day, and yeah, then I'm like, like a good. Week. I'm like good for a week, and then afterwards, I'm like, oh, I'm chance it, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I'm so bad about it that I went like a whole three or four rounds of full MMA sparring and didn't have a mouthpiece in just because I forgot. Like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to wear that when I'm like doing the things that I do. And those are the things <laughs> that are obvious, but there's a lot of other things too that I feel like you tolerate that are gross that aren't necessarily things that are like injuries or like, you know, things that you like wear on your mm -hmm. body when you leave jiu-jitsu. It's the fact that like somebody might sweat in your mouth or you have to grab somebody else. I mean, like it's just like, it's just like the, uh, the swapping sweat thing. Like yeah. you just, it's funny because I always say if, if I'm not sweaty, and you're really sweaty, even if, like, let's say I'm, like, crossing paths with somebody, like, going from one class to the next, like, if they were sweaty and I'm not, like, don't touch me. That's gross. But, like, if we're both sweaty, I'm, I have no problem, like, It has to be being, equitable. <laughs> yeah. Like, be equally sweaty. We both need to be sweaty. It's got to be a good, an even trade. How, how weird is it? <laughs> it? Because it is weird that way because, like, let's say you start training and it's your first round, you know, like, maybe you're coming to an open mat or something, and then you get somebody that maybe has, like, been training for an hour or something. They're already really sweaty and you're like, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, you're kind of wet, like. But if we're both dripping sweat, no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's so weird. And you have those training partners that are just like super sweaty all the time. Yeah. And we've talked before about the people that like smell or whatever. I don't think that's something you actually tolerate. No, you don't. To you don't tolerate smell because you'll avoid training with those people. Totally. And they'll and you will. You will. If you don't say something yourself to that person, you will find somebody that, you know, will say that and yeah. tell them but like, hey, like whether it's like a professor or something to where. For me, as a, as like if I'm teaching and like there's been 
I'm teaching a class and like someone is smelly in that class, <laughs> I maybe not like won't necessarily point that person out, but I'll like make a group announcement like, hey guys, like we need to be respectful, wash our geese, like all this kind of stuff. In a private <laughs> lesson. <laughs> <laughs> but I think um, the sweating on each other like I've had sweat like drip on my face like multiple times and that's always just like uh but you just are like meh and you move on because you're in the middle of the fight. I have a I have one that's very similar and uh especially in the era of covid I I, I think maybe I'm just more cerebral like I you guess You can't say cerebral. No, no, I'm going <laughs> to try to say cerebrally. Ooh, I got it. Ooh. Um like detect the fact that somebody's like mouth is close to mine and i can feel their breath but i was rolling the other day and i inverted and i think i caught the guy a little bit off guard so his weight fell forward but his mouth was this close to mine <laughs> and he just like i felt him like be out of breath because he was like breathing into my mouth and i, just remember being like, I need to like change his position because he's like breathing in my mouth but it's like one of those things where it's like I mean, that's something, though, that doesn't happen that often. I'm it's not that often, but it's conscious. like you you can't start doing jiu-jitsu within mind like, oh, I don't want somebody like to breathe on me or I don't want somebody to sweat on me. It's like, well, that's going to happen. It's going to happen. And you just get over it and you get used to it and it's not a big deal. And I thought it was a big deal the very first time I ever watched you compete because you went for a foot lock on on a girl. And, yeah. And before that, like you hated feet. Like. I do. I and I still don't like feet. Like feet are gross. Um, but I'm not like as weirded out by feet that I used to be. Um, like you used to, when we were dating, you used to like irritate me with that all the time and you thought it was just a cute i thought our relation was gonna be over gonna be early cute. on because i put my feet on your pillow it's yeah like a, which who does that why would like that's a childish thing to do it was and i was a child <laughs> but i uh i thought it would be funny and you weren't even around i just like just did it lightly yeah to, to like, like why because i thought your sister was gonna be like oh tyler put his feet on your pillow and you're like he did that rascal but yeah i didn't know you well then i, I know that the only reaction was gonna be just I think Pure. anybody's reaction, like, why are you putting your feet on my pillow? In general, it, even if you like feet. I mean, not uh, like. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, I don't want to go there. People are weird. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it is one of those things where it's like, I told you, it's like, I could care less about feet and about being grossed out. But I still don't like touching somebody's like sweaty feet. You know what I mean? No, but, you know, in in training, it's like, if that foot comes near me and i'm i need to like it's a good submission i'm grabbing that foot yeah and you i touch feet all the time when they're cold and sweaty Ugh. Ugh. drilling foot locks is my favorite drilling yeah oh, i i don't think twice about it anymore yeah it's true like you do kind of get over a every lot of once in a while like we'll be on the mat and i'll like just notice a guy's feet and i'm like oh those are crusty like those are uh, those are nasty feet, but then like I'll find myself still trying to attack a toehold on them. I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm touching this crusty foot. Yeah, Flintstone <laughs> feet. <laughs> yeah, I Gross. do like having the little like feet washer thing before you step on the mat. Like, oh yeah, it's at least one layer of like, don't bring your stinky feet onto the mat. Yeah, I think more than anything, like, because we have talked. I mean, I've talked about it. People go into the bathroom mm -hmm. without shoes on and then come back on the mat. And you can say like, oh, yeah, like we have like a policy. It's like keep your shoes on until you're unless you're on the mat. Like that's the only time you take your shoes off. But like who knows how to clean those shoes are because most of the time it's like flip flops. Yeah. My flip flops get dirt all over them every time. The beach. I'm, yeah. Or, and then like I walk around barefoot all the time like. And then I go to train jujitsu, but like having a foot washing station is really nice because it's like, okay, now we can have like a clean start to these mats. Yeah, it's a really like, nice sanitation measure. Because, especially because oh, kids, kids are the worst. Yeah, kids. I would have kids like, I've had kids like just walk in barefoot. They didn't even have shoes on. So they're walking through the parking lot barefoot. They're walking like everywhere. Who knows where those little feet have been? Yeah, probably in mud. <laughs> yeah probably worse yeah i i was I mean, we have the theory that a long time ago when we both uh would uh get ringworm when we first started like we we mostly blame the kids yeah because there was a little like we trained at like a place that had like taekwondo and they have shoes 
that they would wear. Oh, yeah, that's right. Too on the mat. But like those kids, like the mats just didn't, it was the mats didn't get cleaned. It wasn't the kids' fault. Yeah. And I think that's like, that's why sanitation, I think, in martial arts is so important. Like washing your gi, washing your feet, like cleaning the mats and that sort of thing is because there is a certain amount of grossness that we have to all like tolerate mm -hmm. and like get over. But uh with that in mind it's like you need to take all the measures to make sure that like we're in a clean environment yes. so that like you minimize like the yes. risks and then also like just the grossness of it you know what yeah. i mean yeah you shouldn't like be exposing yourself to something that's like super harmful to you or your body immune system or whatever we're harming ourselves by trying to like break each other's joints already like yeah. <laughs> you know do the, do the most but i think yeah the sweating thing like Another thing that I just, it's kind of like, I think it should be a rule that guys maybe need to have to wear rash guards because most of the time girls do, yeah. but like having your, you're going to have to like, your face is going to come in contact with like a sweaty chest at some point. And if it's hairy, that's oh. even worse. Or, or you, or if it's like freshly shaved and you got a little, like, it's like spiky, you get like razor burn. You also <laughs> sweat on people more too. It's like I'm yeah. like I hate training without a rash guard now. Um, in, the only time I do is because I forget it or something like yeah. that. Um, but even then, it's like if I'm in side control on somebody or something like that, like then your chest starts like dripping. Yeah, and it's like, you're, you're like, not trying to drip on somebody, so no. you like literally like lean back or something like that, so you're not dripping on on someone. But the rash I mean, guard that's you because you're like being like a, a conscientious, courteous <laughs> yeah. training partner. Most guys don't care. It's true. I, I think back to the days early on when I was training in MMA or even just Nogi and it was just like half the dudes like wouldn't wear shirts and stuff. And I just remember like being like bare chested. Like, I mean, I get if it's like a, if it's an actual MMA fight or whatever, it's like that's kind of different. Yeah. You know, but it's like when in you're training, just, you can prevent that when you're going to go like skin to skin on like a whole bunch of other people that are in there like training or whatever. It's like you get so slippery. Yeah. Uh, so if you were thinking about like starting jujitsu, like I hope you're not listening to this yeah, podcast. Yeah, number fifty wasn't the one, you know, <laughs> because you're gonna hear all the gross things about training. But, but I think most people already kind of, if you're worried about it, you already know those things. Yeah, and that the the thing that I always tell people too, and I think uh, this would be echoed by everybody that trains is like when somebody tells you, I don't know if I could get over one of these things, you're like, you will. Like, you if you like it, you will. If you love the sport, you just get over it. You just, I mean, this is coming from somebody, like, you don't even understand how much I hated feet. Like, I don't even know how to explain how much I was, I was so bad. But now I'm, like, just touching people's feet all the time. Or, like, sweating on, like, people are sweating on me. I've had a guy sweat into my mouth before, and I was just like, <laughs> like <laughs> but, like, if I stop and freak out about it, then guess what? I'm going to lose the position and I need to like keep fighting. So yep. you just get over it. <laughs> yeah. And I think that that competitive that is, nature takes over. It's like the, you know, the pot is so slowly heated up to, to the point to where it's like, you might start thinking like, I can't do the sweating thing and all that kind of stuff. But then you put those pajamas on, you walk out there you start off just like everybody's dry and now you have to get it extra close and then oh turns out you're already sweating a little bit that's not a big deal you mm -hmm. know and i think slowly but surely you get kind of cooked over time and the temperature gets turned up and you're touching somebody's sweaty foot with ringworm on it and yeah you know you break their toes on accident and you're i will say something that there's the so it's something that you don't get used to is people who smell and the worst part about training with those people is that that smell gets on you. Yeah. Like their sweat, whatever the stench is of their, was in their gi or like their rash guard. It like, I've like gone home like feeling like, I'm like, do I stink? And I'm like, man. And it's like, it. I'm like, I don't, I, sometimes I shower at the gym and sometimes I just come home and shower. And it's just like, I, like you can just smell it and, your and you're trying to smells. figure it out it's like where is that at because it's like i changed all my clothes like i usually wipe myself down like with like uh like body wipe or something like that before i go home and then nope still smells and I, that is something that you don't get over because 
stench is not okay. Yeah, and you can fix That's that. a sign of people being just straight dirty. And here's like a pro tip, uh, and I found about I found out about this the other day, and it's something that we already do, and that's taking chlorophyll actually is something that can actually oh, really? prevent you from having like body odor and stuff. Huh. Yeah, there's something about it being like a really base thing. Uh, to be honest, I won't go into it, but I, there was a research study on it, and it was like one of the recommendations for people that have like that is some kind of medical issue. I don't know. Interesting. Yep. So if you're like, I don't want to smell bad, like maybe start taking some chlorophyll. Yeah. It's also be- supposed to be good for blood oxygen. Don't be stanky. All the other things we can get over. We can't get over your stench. Yeah. Those are the things that I think we tolerate that are gross in jiu-jitsu. And we, there's lines at each of those. You know what I mean? It's like yes. You'll tolerate the fact that on accident, somebody might get their tooth knocked out every now and then. You won't tolerate a training partner that's consistently knocking someone's teeth out. Yes. You'll tolerate somebody who has got like a little bit of ringworm, but like I'm not going to tolerate somebody who is like training with a staph infection. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so I think that that's the that's the key here is there's definitely a line. I think everybody, as you do jiu-jitsu more and more, you get comfortable with where that line is mm-hmm. and you get more convicted about, you know, when people cross it. Yes. 100%. <laughs> so I think that that's a really good one to finish episode 50 out on uh, because uh, like you said, it's kind of how we started the podcast and um we will hopefully have some guests here soon that will be chipping in so um we want to thank everybody for listening and uh if you have a chance to write a review or something like that those things are like gold yes jenna any updates anything to add no i'm still looking for a fight still none of these chicks will take it and that's like really messed up but um yeah hopefully soon keep your fingers crossed but that's all Thanks, everybody. (laughs) We'll catch you next time on another episode of... Not Fighting. Not Fighting.